Hi everybody, Aaron from Solace here. Today I'm at Crowdy Hall in Northeast England uh, experiencing some uh, great outdoors. Um, today's video is the first in a short series all about partition queues. Uh, perhaps you've seen this slide before during some of our other presentations on them. Well, I wanted to bring this slide to life. I wanted to make it real, to make it real time, showing the consumers and the partitions changing uh, during uh, kind of normal operations. So that's what today's video is about. It's a demo that I wrote uh, all about partition queues. We're going to look at the rebalance and max handoff timers. Uh, talk about the behavior of the partition queues, um, the various components of the demo, and show you how to run it. So, without further ado, let's check it out. So, why are partition queues better than Solace's traditional non-exclusive queues that we've had forever? I'll give you two good reasons. One, uh, stateful consumers that require all related message data for the same thing, like a ticket number or an order ID or a stock symbol, all go to the same consumer for processing. Non-exclusive queues can't give you that because of their arbitrary kind of round-robin round distribution. And two is with regards to ordering on that particular thing. You know, maybe the apps, the consumers are stateless, but maybe at the back end you have some order entry gateway or payments engine, and it requires that all related things or contexts are in the correct sequence. So I built this demo to play around with partition queues to show how they compare to uh, exclusive and non-exclusive queues. I also wanted it so that I could adjust various parameters such as message rate, message size, slow subscriber delay, uh, number of keys, all dynamically on the fly. I wanted to be able to have that sequencing verification and order checking built in, both at the consumers and at the back end. And I also want to make it visual, to make it graphical, to make it interesting to look at, and uh, hopefully to learn from. So uh, enough slides, let's get into the demo. I am gonna start with a non-exclusive queue just to show you how the demo works. So here is my JavaScript kind of dashboard part of the demo. I have a non-exclusive queue with two subscribers bound to it. I have my publisher sending two messages a second in on a topic that the queue is listening on. And I have my order checker app that's listening to the output of the subscribers. And here are the console terminal apps that are actually driving the demo. Uh, here's my publisher sending on keys one through four. Sequencing is enabled and you can see the sequence number is increasing. Here are my two subscribers and my order checker verifying the data from the subscribers. You can immediately see that the consumers, the subscribers, are complaining about gaps in their data on a per key sequence, on a per key basis, it, uh, it's getting gaps. And that's because of that round robin delivery. Now the order checker has all green tick marks. Every time you see a red X, that's a gap and that's a bad thing. We're, try we're trying to avoid that. Now the order checker is noticing that the subscribers are changing on a per key basis, but everything is in the correct order. And that's because message rates are low, the subscribers aren't delayed, they're passing the data straight through to the back end. So let's make some gaps on the order checker. Let's add a delay to one of the subscribers. I'm gonna do that by injecting a control message. All of my apps are listening on these different control messages. Uh, we should see that, yep, yeah, this guy is now delaying messages for two seconds. And you can see that the order checker now starts flashing red, flashing yellow to indicate gaps, sequence changes in the data. On the console here, you can see the same thing. Now the data, the gaps do eventually get filled in because it's just being delayed by that subscriber. But yeah, just because of that, on a per key basis, uh, non-exclusive queues can't give us everything we want. So the order checker is just showing, I'm just showing that the data is being verified. The order checker actually will flash blue for redeliveries and green for dupes as well. Just a visual way of confirming what's happening. So enough with the non-exclusive queue, let's quit all that and let's switch over to a partition queue and show how it's gonna be better. So you might have seen this other demo before. This was written by my colleague, Ed. Uh, I call it Ed's famous ball demo. I first showed it on uh, my office hours back in January with Rob or February. Um, when we were uh, kind of first talking about partition queues that were just about to be released GA. What's happening is the balls are messages. The messages are balls. And as they go into that portal at the top, they are being published to a partition queue with four subscribers. And the ball color is the sequence or is the key. And so you can actually see that the partition queues are sorting the balls by colors. The consumers are getting all related ball by color because that's the key. So that's the sorting. And we're gonna see that with my demo in just a second and add some sequencing as well. So here is the queue I'm going to use. I call it PQ12 because it has 12 partitions. Um, if you've never configured or created a partition queue before, it's not that hard. Uh, just when you create it, make sure you set non-exclusive queue and then give it a positive number of partitions. Uh, if you click on this show advanced settings, you'll see two other configurations, uh, the rebalance delay and the max handoff timer. Uh, and we're going to show what those are visually uh, in just a second here. So let's go ahead and start some subscribers to bind to that queue. 
Now the first thing you're going to notice is the queue is going to kick off that rebalance delay as subscribers are added. The, whenever you change the number of subscribers, add or remove, uh, the queue will initiate that rebalance delay and while it waits for other consumers to bind. At the end of that, partitions are assigned and everything is ready to go. The way that my dashboard actually knows which partitions are going to where is it's actually listening to the broker's event log over the message bus. The consumers themselves don't actually know which partitions they're connecting to, uh, but I can visualize that just by listening to those event logs over the bus. All right, so we got our partitions assigned. Let's start up my publisher here. It'll connect and start publishing on some number of keys. I've chosen 12 keys specifically to kind of make sure I have a nice even distribution. And you can immediately see here on the console that kind of sorting, color sorting, key sorting in action. This guy's getting 15s and 1s and 8s. This guy's getting 7s and 3s and 6s. This guy's getting 2s uh, and 5s. So sorting is happening. Let's turn on the uh, sequence checking as well. I just need to pass in a non-zero probability to tell the demo sequencing is enabled. And there we go. We can start to see our green tick marks happening. But what happens if we add that subscriber delay, just like we did on the non-exclusive queue? Let's pick one of these guys and give him a, uh, a delay of two seconds as well. There we go, it has now two seconds. In the order checker, everything is still green, and that's because that sequencing or the, or the sorting by key is happening at the partition queue. Only the, queue, the keys going to that consumer are going to be delayed. But the message rates are a bit low. Let's increase them uh, a little bit. I'm just gonna do that here on the console speed up to 100 messages a second, and let's add one more subscriber so we can actually see consumer scaling in progress. So it's gonna connect and bind, the queue is gonna go into that rebalance delay, and at the end of the rebalance delay, there's gonna be the additional max handoff, and that's because there are partitions that need to be assigned to this new guy that are active, there are messages flowing through them, the broker needs to stop delivery to the existing consumers before it flips over to the new guy. There we go. You'll see a jump in the message rates at the order checker as those messages are passed through. But yeah, no out of orders, not even any re-deliveries because messages were paused before flipping over. Everything was acknowledged and all is good. So let's crank up the message rate even more. I'm going to do that by injecting another control message. Oh, these are all the various commands that I can pass to my demo. So all of the apps, the publishers, the subscribers are all listening to these messages. Um, and that's how I do this kind of real-time dynamic control of the message rates. So let's crank it up to 2,000 messages a second. You can see here on the console, the apps are just screaming by. They're gonna switch into kind of an aggregate view, just reporting their stats once a second so we don't have too much data. But uh, all of the sequencing, all the order checking is still actually happening. You can actually see that the partitions that are connected to that delayed subscriber are actually backed up a little bit because, yeah, the, it's delaying acting those messages. So they're kind of being, those partitions are uh, backed up a little bit. So just visually seeing what's happening there. Okay, so what happens if we like scale down the number of consumers? I'm gonna do a graceful shutdown, which will allow the app to kind of finish acknowledging any messages that it has. Um, you can see the partitions for that guy start to, uh, they unbind and they start to fill up. Uh, we're gonna have him flip over to a new guy, but because I did a graceful shutdown, we shouldn't see any re-deliveries. Yep, no re-deliveries, no blues. No, good, no gaps, no reds flashing. The order checker saw a jump in message rates as those partitions got drained, but everything is good. But what happens if we do a hard kill? Let's do a hard kill. In Java, this is system.halt. Basically, stops it right away. Any messages that are in flight, any messages that it's holding on to before acknowledgement have to get re-delivered. So we should see some re-delivery, some blue flashes when this happens. There we go. We saw, yep, yeah, the order checker sees some re-deliveries. The consumer saw some re-deliveries but no gaps, no out of orders happening whatsoever. I am gonna be doing a deep dive on this demo with my colleague Ed, the one who wrote the ball demo on my office hours next week. So be sure to check around, uh, stick around for that. Um, the code is available on GitHub. Everything is there, just it's on our Solace Labs. So head over to github.com slash Solace Labs, search for PQ, you should see it there. Uh, it's all in Java, you need Java to run it, but that's about it. Even the dashboard doesn't need the app, the demo to run. You can point it at your own queue just to kind of see what's happening inside it. So there you go. Um, real quick overview of the demo. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Come check out the office hours. Find me on solace.community. It's where I hang out and answer lots of questions. Um, if you like the video, if you like the demo, put a comment, let me know. Um, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye-bye.